we're now going to take a look at a particular exception that occurs when we're dealing with arrays. And this is a very common error when dealing with arrays. Let's say we have the following declaration. So I have an array of doubles called num, and we set it to new double 10, so it's an array of 10 doubles, and I have some integer value i, and i is going to be our index. So i is valid as long as it's between 0 and 9. So we say that index i is in bounds if i is greater than or equal to 0 and i is less than or equal to size minus 1. If the value of i is either a negative number or it's greater than size minus 1, then we say i is out of bounds. Why is this important? Well, we only, our index is only valid between 0 and 9. So if our index ends up going outside of these bounds, Java is going to throw what's called an array index out of bounds exception. Yeah, I know that looks like a really long word, but that's how it works. It's an array index out of bounds exception. And if the program doesn't handle this exception, the program will immediately terminate. So we've already seen some cases where we can actually handle exceptions if it occurs. And this is one of those where if we don't handle it, the default choice is just to terminate the program. So we'll now take a look at a very, very common error that would cause the exception. So here's something where I have a for loop. I'm processing each element of the array, and maybe I'm just initializing all the elements to zero. So i is zero, i is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus, and we just set list i to zero. So my claim here is that we get an error. Why would this cause an exception? So think about it for a second, pause the video if you need to, and then start it up when you think you know the answer. Okay, so the problem is with our condition right here. Because our loop is going from zero to 10, because i is less than or equal to 10. But here's the problem, 10 is greater than size minus one. So if we go, when we go to list 10, that element does not exist. So that's gonna cause the, the exception. So how can we fix this? Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can either say, um, we could say i is less than 10. That's the common way to fix it. Or you could do uh, i less than equal to nine. Either one of these would fix the problem. Most times people will just do i less than 10. We're now gonna take a look at how we use arrays in our methods. Now, before we can talk about integrating arrays into methods, we need to first define the base address. So the base address of an array is the memory address of the first array element. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say list is my array. The base address is gonna be the memory address of list zero. Why is this important? Well, when we pass an array as a parameter, we're passing the base address of the array, which means that we're passing the memory address of the first element. And does that make sense? And the answer is yes, because technically my array is a reference variable. It stores a memory address. That memory address is pointing to the very first element of my array. So when I'm passing the address of the array, I'm technically passing the address of the first element. So with that said, arrays can be parameters to our methods. And the syntax for it is really not any different than what we would expect. We would have our data type, some square braces, and then the array name. So it's just like an, any other variable that's a parameter, except we have the square braces. So for example, I could have public static void and then some method, maybe we'll call it my method. And in here I have two different arrays, A and B. Uh, so I have an array of integers and then I have an array of doubles, and then I pass some other uh, integer parameter. So this will technically work. So then I can use A and B as an array of integers and doubles respectively. Now, if I want to pass an array, we need to use the name of the array as an argument. So let's take a look at an example. So here's some code where I create uh, an array called iList, which will be an array of 10 integers. I have dList, which is an array of 15 doubles and I have some other number, and we're gonna assume that there are some values in these variables. But when I call my method, I would just pass the names of the array. So I have iList as the first argument, dList as the second argument, and number as the third argument. Now, once we've passed our arrays into parameters, 
then we can just process any and all the elements in the method. And it's the same thing as if we process them anywhere else. Now, one potential issue is that the array may actually have fewer elements with values in them than the total number of elements. Now, this issue isn't just with methods, but just in general that we may have an array of like 20 elements, but we only want to do something with 10 of them. So the way we can fix this is we include an additional parameter that gives us the number of valid elements in the array. So here's an example where maybe we want to print the contents of all elements in the array that have something in there. And in this case, we pass the list, the array list, and then we pass some integer num. And we're just assuming here that the first num elements of the array actually have some valid value in there. So then for each element up to the num, I guess that's the best way to put it, the, the first num elements, we just print those values. Now we aren't limited to just entire arrays as well. We could pass individual array elements too. So for example, I could say print array and then A would be my array and A zero, well, that's technically an integer. So I can pass that. So in this case, we're saying that the first element in our array is gonna tell me how many elements we actually wanna print if we were to use the same example from the previous slide.